What's up, YouTube? It's your boy JB, and we are here today with the week's hottest topics, you guys. So these, uh, this is the week's hottest topic number 43, and this is going to be the hot topics for the week of June 27th through July 2nd, you guys. All right, you guys. So before we get into that, if you guys are watching this video or any other video on my channel and you're not subscribed, hit that subscribe button, you guys, for me. It means a lot to me. So let's go ahead and just discuss some of these hot topics this week. All right, you guys, so we ain't going to be down here long because it's um, 7 o'clock at night and the sun will be setting pretty soon. So we ain't going to be down here too, too long talking to you guys today. So we're going to start up with a little bit of what I like to call WTF news. So the first thing in WTF news, I saw this yesterday, which was Wednesday. I'm recording this on Thursday. So yesterday it was announced that Bill Cosby, Bill the Pill, was released from prison. I actually thought it was a joke when I first saw it. I'm like, Bill Cosby's released from prison? Why would they do that? Like, I mean, really? So, the reason that they said that they released him, it says it's because of a non-prosecution agreement with a, previous with a previous prosecutor, which meant he should not have been charged in the first case. In the case. But I mean, he had, didn't he admit to drugging the women? Like, how does that, like, really? Like, make that make sense to me. Like, that is a complete slap in the face to the victims that said he's, you know, he drugged them. And he, and, you know, he sexually assaulted them. Like, that is a complete slap in the face to those ladies. And I feel really bad for them. I really, really feel bad for those ladies. Now, Felicia Rashad took it upon herself to get on social media and I'm going to um, read you guys what her tweet was. And this is a quote. This is a quote tweet. Finally, with a few exclamation points after it, a terrible wrong is being righted. A miscarriage of justice is corrected. Exclamation point. End quote. Ma'am. No wrong. No miscarriage of justice was actually righted. You know what I'm saying? It's not like new evidence came to light that exonerated Bill Cosby. He was let out because of a... And let me repeat it one more time for the people in the back to hear. Bill Cosby was released from prison because of a non-prosecution agreement with a previous prosecutor, which meant he should not have been charged in the case. That's not saying he was innocent or anything of the sorts. So for you to say that a... Let me get this correct. A terrible wrong had, was righted. A miscarriage of justice was corrected. Where did you get that from? So then after she... And then the, the funny thing with Felicia Rashad was... With Felicia Rashad, she... When she tweeted this, she turned off her mentions. So you could not tweet her about it. If you wanted to say something to her, you had to then quote retweet her. Now she could see that. But she turned off her mentions. I'm like, you knew what you were doing when you did that in the first place. But then she later came out, and she's also since deleted that tweet. She's come out and said that, you know, um, she fully supports, you know, um, victims of sexual assault. You know, she knows the longevity that, you know, the, the deep-rooted pain and the longevity that it, you know, the effect that it has on people in the long run. Why did you tweet that in the first place? It's one thing to be supportive of him. But what you did was just outright a big disrespect to the women that have, you know, a, you know, said that he did that to them. Like, come on. Like that, that was number, that was the first thing. Like, that was really what it was. First, it was he's released from prison. Then it was the Felicia Rashad thing. I was done after that. So then let's move on to some more WTF news. Monique. So you guys remember recently Monique has talked about, you know, the women wearing the bonnets and their slippers in the airports or wherever else, right? So you guys remember I gave my thoughts and my opinions on it. I don't have an issue with it. If, if that's what a person wants to wear out, 
Let them wear that out. That ain't got nothing to do with me. That ain't got nothing to do with you. That has nothing to do with anybody. That is on them. It's not a direct representation of you. It's not a direct representation of me. It is a direct representation of that person who feels that, you know, they're comfortable going out in public with their bonnet on their head or, you know, their slippers on. So Monique took it upon herself. Um, I think this was last week or, or this week. Monique took it upon herself. There was a woman in the airport. And granted, the woman had on what it looked like a wife beater, looked like some boy shorts and her, you know, her bonnet on her head. Monique then took a picture of that woman and posted it on social media. That's where Monique lost me at when she posted it on social media. Like, what was that supposed to do? Was that supposed to embarrass the woman? Was that supposed to embarrass somebody else? Like, what was that supposed to do? And why did you feel the need to take a picture of the woman? That was where I, that was where Monique lost me at when she posted that photo of the woman. Now, granted, like I said, the woman went out so she knew what she looked like. So I'm not going to sit here and say the woman was, was embarrassed or anything. But why would you, what you were doing, Monique, I feel that you were doing that in an attempt to embarrass that woman. And I just don't agree with that. Like, do you not go to the, do you not go to your local Walmart, Targets, wherever? And like I said before, when um, we first talked about this, white people do that as well. It's not just black people, but I guess Monique don't care about what white people look like. She just cares about what we look like. Like when you go to Walmart, do you, do you not go to your local neighborhood Walmart and see how people dress when they go in there? I see it all the time when I go to my local Walmart. Like actually a few weeks ago, I went to the Walmart by my old apartment. And there was a woman that went in, there was a black woman, and she had some boy shorts on. Actually, she had some booty shorts on, and her butt was literally hanging out of the shorts, but it didn't bother me none, because I'm like, shit, she's comfortable, she's going, she had a few items, and she was in and out. I'm like, you know what it is, what it is, and I saw women in Walmart with no bras on, and I'm like, they're just going in there to shop. Like, what does it bother you? Like, when I go to, if I go to Walmart just to go in and out, if I'm going from my, my my place to Walmart, I might not have I'm, I'm gonna have a t-shirt on, my shorts on, and sometimes I just have the just the shorts on. I go commando. Like, does what does that bother you, Monique? Like, I, I really don't understand that. Really, really don't understand that. It's just like I said before with Monique, mind your business. Once you mind your business, you will be fine. Like, if you don't go out looking like that, that's on you. Like, that's not how you want to present yourself. But obviously, other people don't really give a shit about, you know, what people think about them or what people feel about how they dress. But like I said before, Monique was just fucked up for posting that woman on social media. Like, were you trying to embarrass the woman? Like, what were you trying to do? But, you know, let me know what you guys think about Monique and let me know what you guys think about the Bill Cosby situation. And we're going to move on. All right, you guys, next up, let's do a little bit of versus talk. All right. So as I'm filming this um, video, the versus is taking place with Bobby Brown and Keith Sweat. So once I finish with you guys, I'm going to go and watch it and, you know, we'll discuss it next week. But let me know who you guys are, you know, who you guys are amped for in the Bobby Brown, Keith Sweat. Honestly, for me, it's Bobby Brown. It is Bobby Brown. I like, I love Bobby Brown, but Keith Sweat got some hits that I like too, so you know we'll see and then while we're talking about verses let's talk about let us talk about um um who are we gonna talk about Lil Kim so at the BET Awards on the red carpet Lil Kim was asked who would she you know want to do a verses with and she said Nicki Minaj and I was like ooh Jesus she said Nicki Minaj would that work because you guys know Lil' Kim and Nicki Minaj have had their beef over the years. So I was like, would that be a good versus battle, Lil' Kim and Nicki Minaj? I mean, I guess, you know, since they're in different, you know, they're both mothers at this point. They both are, you know, they should be more mature than what they were when Nicki first came out. I would hope that they could, you know, sit down and actually do a versus with each other. But I think the thing with Lil' Kim and Nicki Minaj is not even more so the women. I think it's more so specifically the stand groups that they have. You know, the bee, her beehive versus the barbs. But um, let me know what you guys think. Do you guys think that that could work? Who do you guys think would um, take a versus between... I know versus is not about who, about who wins and who loses. 
But who are you guys? Who would you guys be more amped to see in reverse? I guess I should say that. Would you guys be amped to see Lil Kim or Nikki? And then um, let's wrap up the versus talk. We're talking about the verses that happened last Saturday with Soldier Boy and Bow Wow. Now I will say, when it comes to Soldier Boy and Bow Wow, I wasn't necessarily looking forward to watching that versus. But when I got the notification on my phone that versus was alive, I'm like, oh, it's Soldier Boy and Bow Wow. So I clicked onto the the verses, and oh my God, it was a, it was. I had a good time with them. You know, you really forget about some of Soldier Boy's hits. And I was telling, I was hanging out with my cousin. I'm like, you know, you forget about Soldier Boy's hits. But for me, I remember, you know, when Soldier Boy came out. Soldier Boy came out the year that I actually graduated, was getting ready to graduate high school. So, Soldier Boy's hits were when I was in, you know, ending my high school, um, you know, ending high school, going into college. So he would be playing; they would be playing him in the club, and Bow Wow with Bow Wow. I actually grew up with Bow Wow. You know, I was when Bow Wow first came out. I was, I think, I was in middle school, and then we went on through high school with Bow Wow. I mean, you know, y'all know how I feel about Bow Wow, which um, with from watching my growing up hip hop reviews with Bow Wow. Um, I still don't see it for a little shot, but you know, whatever. Shad, don't see it for him. But I will say that that versus was hella funny. They cussed a whole lot. I ain't never heard the word nigga so much in my life. And then the fact that Soldier Boy kept playing that one song three times, it was hilarious. But I mean, I, like I said, I enjoyed the verses. So yeah, let me know in the comments section below about the verses. Let me know, um, you know, going. For, let me know about what you guys thought about this Bow Wow Soldier Boy verses. Let me know what you guys think about the um, Keep Sweat and Bobby Brown verses, and also let me know what you guys think about a potential Lil Kim and Nicki Minaj verses. Do you think it could work? Let me know in the comment section below, and we'll move forward. All right, you guys. The next story that we're going to talk about is um, the um, Derek Chauvin. Derek Chauvin. So, you guys, I honestly, to be quite honest with you guys, I had really forgotten about his sentencing that was coming up last week. And it wasn't until I actually logged into social media to see that his sentencing had started. So, you know, I, I, I tuned into it and I was irritated from the jump with watching it and more specifically because when i when i tuned into the, um the um sentencing of Derek chauvin his mother was up there talking you know she was talking about Derek and how you know um if he got the maximum or whatever that by the time he gets out he and his, me and his dad will be long dead i was thinking to myself like lady who the hell cares like george floyd's daughter will never get to see her father again and here you are talking about the fact that if your son goes to prison for even 30 years, by the time he gets out, you and his father will be dead. But the thing is, you guys will be able to go and visit him in prison. I know it might not be, you know, an ideal situation for you guys to go visit your son in prison, but this little girl will never get to see her father. Her father will never get to see her, you know, um, go to the prom you know, go on her first date, get, walk her down the aisle, um, see her when she has her first child. Her father will not be there for all of her first. He's not going to be there to see that. Your son, however, you guys will be able, to, you guys will be able to go and visit him on the weekends with this little girl. She has to go and talk if she goes to visit her father. She has to go and talk to a grave. But you want to sit here and say, oh, I won't be able to, you know, by the time me and, you know, he gets out, me and his father will be long dead. Oh, well, I don't care. Miss me with that. <clears throat> so, you know, I know people are upset about the, you know, the sentencing. They gave him 22 and a half years in prison, right? And... I know that they're not going to be able to put him in, you know, the general population because he is a formal a former officer and that would be a detriment to his, you know, his well-being. So they're going to put him off by himself. I would prefer if they put him in like a solitary confinement, you know, it's the least. I mean, 
for me, you know, I guess 22 and a half years is, do I feel like it's justice? Not necessarily. You know what I'm saying? Because I know he has the possibility to get out in 15 years, right? It's kind of like with the Amber Geiger situation. You know, she's currently appealing her her um, conviction in, her, up there um, in Dallas, which I don't agree with that either. Um, honestly, for me, you know, I would be more okay. I would be okay if Derek Chauvin had gotten life in prison, but for him to get to, you know twenty two and a half years, that's just like I said before, like I just said a minute ago, with George Floyd, his daughter will never be able to see her father again, you know, and Derek Chauvin's family will be, like I said, they will be able to visit him in prison. They can go visit him in prison. Like I said, is it, is it an ideal situation? Absolutely not. But this is not an ideal situation for George Floyd, his daughter, his brothers, his family. This is not the ideal situation for them. So, honestly, I, you know, I really kind of wish they had given Derek Chauvin the maximum, which was, what, 30 years you got, which was 30 years, but even 30 years, like, 30 years. Well, Derek Chauvin's, like, what, in his 40s now? Is he's, in, he's in his 40s, so 22 years, so he'll be about 60-something. I think they said 60. Yeah, I wish y'all had gave him life, to be quite honest with you. That's what I would have preferred. Life in prison for him. But, you know, I'm actually, I'm, you know, although I'm not happy with how much time he got in prison, I am happy that we did get a conviction. So I guess, you know, we got to take a small, we got to take the little small token that we got. But... I really feel like more could have been done. But, yeah, you know, let me know what you guys think about that. And we will move on. All right, you guys. Next up, let's talk about um, Greg Leaks, you guys. So, we all know that Greg suffered from, you know, has had colon cancer. You know, we remember when it happened on Real Housewives of Atlanta. We remember how Nene was that season of Real Housewives of Atlanta. And even back then, I was thinking to myself when it happened, why did Nene continue to do The Real Housewives of Atlanta when she was going through something so, you know, stressful, so tumultuous in her life? But, you know, Greg had, you know, oh, you know, Greg had um, was in remission at that. He got he became in remission. So this week, Nene did an interview on the Jasmine brand. Right. And when she was on the Jasmine brand, she revealed to us that Greg has been in a hospital and you know he might be in there a little bit he's gonna be in there a little bit longer because his cancer has returned and you guys when she, when she said that his cancer had returned my heart immediately sank when I heard that Greg's cancer had returned because I was like damn man you know I just really hate cancer like it's fuck cancer for life because I've lost loved ones to cancer I lost my grandmother to cancer my grandfather to cancer my I lost an uncle to cancer like I've lost so many family members to cancer and I can't even imagine what this family is going through like actually one of my the uncle that I said passed away from cancer actually I don't even know if he ever went into remission I think he was just literally living he, he lived his last few years with that with the cancer and it just progressively got worse I know he did chemotherapy, but I think that I don't even think the chemo was helping him. I think the chemo plus the cancer was just, you know, eating his body or eating at, you know, eating away at his body. But um, you know, like I said, my heart, my heart, my prayers, my well wishes definitely go out to the Leaks family. I hope that you know Greg is able to, you know, put up the good fight and you know once again you know, put cancer in remission, man, I just, you know, I really do feel bad, you know, despite how I felt about Nene in her last few seasons, at one point, Nene was one of my favorites on Real Housewives of Atlanta, but, you know, I really, really honestly wish Nene, Greg, and the family nothing but the best, and I hope that, like I said, he's able to, you know, put cancer in remission and, you know, live a long, happy, 
healthy and prosperous life. Because out of the with the house husbands of Atlanta, Greg has been a favorite in the franchise. So yeah, keep your head up, Greg. Keep your head up, Nene. Keep your head up, everyone in the family. And we hope that Greg is able to pull through this once again. And let's move on, you guys. All right, guys. So the next thing that I want to talk about is Caitlyn Jenner. So we all know that Caitlyn is running for governor out there in California, right? And honestly, when it comes to Caitlyn Jenner, I wonder how much of this, like, I just get a stunt show. I just get a stunt show, a circus from Caitlyn Jenner when she's talking about running for governor. I just don't take anything she says seriously. And then the fact that she has, you know, her, I think it's her campaign manager. He worked with you know who. Like, I literally do not take Caitlyn at all seriously. Her politics makes no sense. Like, a few weeks ago, she was talking about the fact that she, you know, she was talking about transgender um, children playing in sports. More specifically, trans girls playing, you know, with um, cis girls on, you know, like in sports, like basketball, volleyball and stuff like that. And I'm like, how are you a part of the trans community, but you're so disconnected from the community? That's what baffles me when it comes to Caitlyn Jenner. I honestly don't hope that Caitlyn Jenner doesn't have a snowball's chance in hell of becoming governor of California because honestly, it's so funny when it comes to Caitlyn. You voted for you know who. And I feel like with Caitlyn, she's she's pandering, she's catering to his base, but you're catering to a you're catering and pandering to a base that doesn't necessarily like you. You're a trans woman. The only thing about Caitlyn that makes herself different from anyone else is that she's a rich white woman. If you weren't a rich, privileged white woman, you would just be another regular trans person that they really don't give a fuck about. And I don't know. I don't get how she doesn't see that. They. I don't know if they. I, I don't. I don't believe that they're going to take her seriously. Like the woman just is 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 frustrating. Like every time you turn around. Something with her with her politics is like, girl, it goes against everything that you should stand for and believe in. So her latest thing that she's talking about is the critical race theory. She is opposed to critical race theory. And I was like, girl, how are, out of all things, you're opposed to critical race theory. Now, I get it. People want to say that, you know, kids in today's society don't have to deal with race. You know, they don't, they don't, um, they're, I guess you would say a little bit more woke. I guess you would try to want to say. My head is spinning, you guys. Sorry. Oh, God. Please don't let this be, please don't let this be a, one of them things. This that vertigo crap. I had to go home and take an ad bill. Or a leave. I think it's the leave I got. My head is not spinning. I just got a big. I mean, I just got a really bad headache out of nowhere. Um. So yeah, she's talking about critical race theory, and the thing that I have an issue with. There are so many people who are opposed to critical, you know, critical race theory being taught in the schools, right? And I'm like, why are you so opposed to it? You don't want people to know about white supremacy. You don't want people to know about what happened in the past. But if you don't teach it then there's the potential for it to happen again. So I'm really thoroughly confused by people who are so up, but it's, the, it's these Republicans. And I feel like it's these racist Republicans that are so dead set against critical race theory. Like it makes no sense. Like it literally makes absolutely no sense to me. And then with Caitlin, I'm like, girl, ain't your grandchildren biracial? Like Kylie, Kylie got a baby with, um, tra um, 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 is it Travis Scott? No. Whatever his name is. Like your 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 granddaughter is biracial. Chloe's baby, biracial. Kim's kids, biracial. Like I get it in this in this world, you know, we want to say everyone is woke. They don't deal with the things of the past. But like I just said a few minutes ago, if you don't teach what happened in the past, then you pretty much run the risk of the past repeating itself. So that's why you should teach, you know, teach the stuff. I mean, hell, 
I mean, and, and, and let's just talk about, look at what's happened, look at what's been going on in the last four years with all these white supremacist groups coming to the light. Like, Caitlyn is an anomaly. I really, like I said, I hope that the people of California don't vote for that ignorant ass woman. And that's all I got to say about it. Let me know what you guys think about it. And we're going to move on because I got to wrap up because my I need to go take something for my head. All right, you guys. And then to wrap it up, let's just, you know, send out a few congratulations. Um, so congratulations are in order to Neo and his wife, Crystal. They had their bouncing. I believe it's a baby girl. I believe they had a little girl. And then also congratulations go out to Erica Mena and Safari. Good God of hell. Erica Mena and Safari. So Erica Mena and Safari welcomed their baby boy, Mr. Straight Jr. into the world. I don't forgot when they welcomed that little boy into the world. Um, With Erica Mena and Safari, y'all know we're going to see this crap with them play out um, starting Monday on Love and Hip Hop Atlanta. It's like what Wendy Williams says to them. Y'all just need to sit down and figure out a way to be great co-parents to each other because y'all being married to each other, it's a disaster. And y'all need to be the best parents that y'all can be for them kids. That's what it's going to come. That's what it needs to be. Y'all be the best parents y'all can for the kids because the marriage ain't for y'all. I don't think marriage is for y'all. But we will definitely talk about Erica Mena and Safari more in depth as Love and Hip Hop Atlanta gets ready to wrap up. I mean, not wrap up amp up um starting monday july 5th on vh1 all right guys that's it i gotta wrap this up because my head hurts like i said and i gotta get to the crib and take something from my head and we do this every single week we do the same time same place same channel as always um stay safe you guys um be safe out there wash your hands wear your mask or not whichever one you guys choose to do be safe be blessed and we will see you guys again later on for um you guys will see Growing up hip hop, and you will see the reunion for uh, Ready to Love as well as Love After Lockup. So until then, until then, you guys, bye.